Welcome to Impact on Ohio, the series where we highlight Ohio leaders from the State House to the U.S. Capitol. We sit down with dedicated public servants to tackle the issues that matter most to Ohio businesses. Brought to you by the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, the state's leading business advocate. We aggressively champion free enterprise, economic competitiveness, and growth for the benefit of all Ohioans. Stay tuned for insightful conversations that will shape the future of Ohio's business landscape. Get ready for Impact on Ohio, where business meets leadership, because Ohio's success is everyone's success. Hello and welcome to the Ohio Chamber of Commerce's interview series. I'm Rick Carfagna of the Ohio Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's my pleasure to be joined today by State Senator Steve Huffman. Uh, Senator Huffman is from the 5th Ohio Senate District, which covers all of Miami and Preble counties, as well as portions of Butler, Dark, and Montgomery counties. Uh, in addition to being a state senator, a former state representative, uh, Senator Huffman has also been a practicing physician for, I believe, over 32 years, if I'm not mistaken. Great. Uh, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, honor to be here and uh, um, uh, in, enjoyable time. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what, what's your journey been to get to this point here as, a, as a, your second term in the Ohio Senate? Uh, I never imagined in my life that I would be a sitting senator or get into politics, but uh, um, you know, grew up in the district that I, uh, I currently live in and represent, medical school and practiced medicine for um, 20 some years. I was elected county coroner in 12 uh, and then an opportunity to go to the house. Um, and people always ask, you know, why? And I'm like, uh, my kids were at an age that I felt they were vulnerable and they, I wanted to make Ohio a great place for them to live, a great place to grow up. In uh, a great place to practice medicine. So I ran for the House, was there for four years, uh, re elected to the Senate in 18 and re-elected in, in 22. So I chaired the, the House uh, Health Committee uh, when I was there and have been uh, the chair here in the, the, the Senate for the last three or four years. So, uh, Senator Huffman, I'm hoping you could talk a little bit about Issue 2. Uh, it was passed on the statewide ballot last November. It was an initiated statute to legalize recreational marijuana in the state of Ohio. Um, what do you see, where, where do you see things heading on that issue moving forward? I know that the governor has come out and proposed assorted fixes to that statute. Uh, the Ohio Senate has passed legislation to that end. Uh, there is legislation pending in the Ohio House to do that. Certainly we in the business community have, have proposed uh, uh, some potential reforms to issue two. Uh, what do you see happening? Well, I, I think we need to go back to, to 2015 when there was a ballot initiative on medical marijuana and recreational. Um, felt it was very poorly written given, you know, 10, 10 people uh, monopolies on the whole industry. Um, it, it, this, uh, the speaker came to me when I was in the house in 16 and said, hey, look, we need to get out in front of this because it's medical, you're medical. Uh, and so we passed uh, medical marijuana in 2016, which I think did a lot of good things. It became, kept, the, kept it very tight. It kept it to the patient um, doctor physician relationship was, was great there. And it also, with, uh, as far as the chamber was concerned, it, it honored the employee aspect of marijuana. You could still have a drug free workplace, which was, was very important in that bill. Um, so to me, people have held off for a while for this ballot initiative. Um, personally, uh, I would have preferred and did vote no for it, but I, I accept it. And going forward, we need to fix some of the things that people didn't really, under, what I believe didn't understand. One is um, home grow. Home grow, you can have six plants, uh, 12 in a household if there's two adults. Six plants will produce 3,600 joints a, a year, 10 plants a, a day. So what are you going to, you know, even if you smoke three a day, what are you going to do with the other seven? Sure. It develops the black market. Um, it, it, you know, and the other dumb thing about the bill is that you can't be prosecuted until you have more than 23 plants in your house. So you, why you can have six, but then have this other number out there, um, uh, public consumption. We need to do something about pu public consumption. I don't want to sit next at a ball game with someone smoking marijuana next to my child. Uh, we need to do things about um, 
um, um, open container in a vehicle. Sure. Um, so there, there's some th things to work on, and uh, you know, and the, the Senate tried to do some things. Uh, um, the, the president asked me after the election, you know, let's look at these things because Senator Sherry and I have been working on it for years. And I think we came up with a good bill that we sent to the House and we're still trying to work with them to, to get things done. You had uh, earlier uh, drug free workplaces, and, and that is an important aspect. Uh, when you authored the medical marijuana uh, statute, you know, you were very vigilant about preserving an employer's ability to maintain a drug free workplace, zero tolerance policies testing abilities of employees. So that's something that I want to thank you for on behalf of uh, our membership. And uh, we hope that those protections do get married over into recreational as well. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit, Senator. Uh, Governor Mike DeWine recently asked the Ohio General Assembly to take steps to prevent the sale of so-called Delta 8 Delta 8 THC products. Uh, you've announced uh, your own intent to, to take legislative steps on this. Can you talk a little bit, tell the audience, what are Delta 8 THC products? How are these different from other THC products that have now been authorized under issue two and how should the state handle these? Well, it, it's kind of a complicated issue. So in 2019, I had the bill to legalize hemp in the state of Ohio. And these are somewhat products of, of, of of the hemp plant, which is a relation, uh, a similar plant to marijuana, and delta delta nine is what we think is THC intoxicating. Delta eight is less intoxicating, but can be magnified by the way you produce it and smoke it, and so they bec become intoxicating uh, in, in certain ways. And so you can find these in convenience stores um, all over the state, and miners can buy them, and that's what really bothers the governor. So back in a budget uh, about a year ago, the, gov uh, the, the governor and I ha had already been working on this to, um, to get it out of reach of children. Uh, we had a, ba uh, um, um, a budget amendment. Um, the House did not understand it or uh, uh, had not really taken it up, so it came out of the budget. Um, issue uh, two passes, uh, and, and, and the governor and I um, have, and his team have restarted to discuss. The main thing is to get intoxicating substances away from children uh, and, and only into adults that um, know what they're getting into. Very good. Uh, so uh, you currently serve as the chairman of the Senate Health Committee. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what do you think legislatively? I mean, you're, you're a physician. You, you've been in and around healthcare policy for decades now. Uh, as the chair of that committee, I mean, what do you think legislatively can be done to help improve healthcare costs in Ohio? Um, you, you know, you know, being a physician, um, I, I've always been against um, mandates. The, the state of Ohio shouldn't tell an insurance company what they can provide in a product and what they cannot, because what it does is continues to, to drive up the cost. I believe that we have about 127 federal mandates, somewhere around 35 state mandates. And every one, you know, it, well, it's, it, it's just a little bit. All those little bits continue to add up, and, and people will start losing insurance because um, employers will make the decision. This is now too expensive. I can't provide this. I'm only going to provide a high deductible for this reason because because of the mandates. And you know, the state of Ohio can only pass laws on about 16 percent of all health plans in the state, and those tend to be the small businesses. And and, and that becomes very difficult um, because we can't uh, the ERISA plans we can't touch the the. The basically self-insured we can't touch. It, it, it's difficult on, on that and the employer, so. Well, managing costs is certainly of utmost importance to our membership and to the statewide business community. Uh, but what can we do to, I guess, try to drive healthier outcomes among Ohioans in general? That's always, uh, you know, from, from a, <laughs> right. I, I mean, from a, from a, as a physician and a general member of the General Assembly, that's, you know, people make choices. And, you know, we have to guide them into, you know, the best choices, uh, you, you know, and it's not, you know, outlaw the, the, the big gulp with 32 ounces of Coke. That's their choice. But make sure that they know that, you know, that things are out there that are all, all alternative to for uh, and what is a healthy lifestyle to um, why it's important to 
um, get immunizations? Why is it important to get your colonoscopy and your preventive health? Because we know that th those things, um, uh, you, you know, you catch that different cancers and stuff early, uh, you have much better outcomes. So preventive health and, and just education on promoting, people's... Promoting yep. more wellness in general. Yep. Yeah. I guess as you see it, what are some of the biggest issues in healthcare uh, currently in Ohio? Uh, th the same as in a, every other industry is, is workforce. Uh, we, we, you know, I think uh, the schools are doing their best uh, to, to make nurses, doctors, uh, allied health. Um, but, you know, people, a lot of people retired earlier because of COVID and other things. The, there was a large burnout because of, of COVID. Um, and, I, and I think people just need to be revigorated, the, the education out there that it's a great um, a great way to help people, help your community, and, and it's, it's, it's workforce, which is ultimately access. If you can't get into the doctor for three weeks, well, then you have to go to the emergency room. Emergency room's good care, but it's not the proper care. So um, access and, and workforce is the two things that we really need to change a lot. Sure. And then finally, you know, you, we're halfway through the 135th General Assembly, um, which lasts two years long. Uh, what do you see as uh, issues that may be coming out of your committee for the remainder of this year? Um, I, you know, there's, there's always in every General Assembly scope issues about um, all, all disciplines being optometrists or psychiatrists and increasing their scope. And, you know, as a member of the General Assembly and Health Committee, we have to look at them and say what is safe and what isn't safe and, and what is best uh, for all Ohioans and, and things evolve uh, th um, uh, for years. And so people increasing scope is, um, is common, but as a member of the General Assembly, we just got to make sure that it's safe and appropriate and there's appropriate education. And to that point, like you just said, I mean, workforce is the biggest driver right now in healthcare. We need more healthcare professionals across the board, but we need to make sure that they have the proper training and the proper levels of education if we're gonna authorize them to take on greater responsibilities. No, I, I agree. And I think that, you know, the, the schools, uh, the medical schools, the allied health schools are doing their best. Um, we need to continue to support them uh, financially and however else we need to, um, to allow them to bring the workforce. And then we have to bring people in Ohio and keep them in Ohio. We got to make Ohio a great place to live. We, we you, you know, it be it, uh, you know, I, I have a bill to eliminate uh, all of the income tax uh, here in the state of Ohio. People want, there's people that want to do that. And so from uh, amenities and other things, uh, as a general assembly, we need to continue to make it a great place to uh, live and raise your children. Well, Senator Huffman, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for everything you're doing, not just to be vigilant, on health care issues, but on taxation and every other large issue that comes for the Ohio General Assembly. Uh, it's, it's of utmost importance to the business community that we, we share in what you're trying to do. You know, we want to make Ohio a great destination to operate a business, but also a place to put down roots and to raise a family. So thank you for all that you're doing. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. You got it. Well, that that's a wrap for the uh, latest segment of our elected officials interview series. Again, I'm Rick Carfania, joined by State Senator Stephen Huffman, and we thank you for joining us today. If you have an idea for the Impact on Ohio video series, email us anytime. You can also scan the QR code to take you directly to the YouTube page and watch Impact on Ohio.